Hi, my name is Will Matheson, and I'm here to talk about choosing a display. For simplicity's sake, we'll limit ourselves to displays, as opposed to projectors, and we'll concentrate on three off-the-shelf technologies, CRT, LCD, and plasma. First, the cathode ray tube. Cathode rays are really just streams of electrons observed in a vacuum. So, to make a display, we need an electron gun and an evacuated pitcher tube. The pitcher tube will need to be more rigid than this water bottle. CRTs have a very wide viewing angle. Imagine if that family were watching a laptop screen. I don't think their seating configuration would work very well. CRTs will optimally display every resolution they are capable of displaying. CRTs are ideal for displaying low resolution content. They have the lowest possible input lag, the delay between a display receiving a signal and actually displaying it, and very fast response time, the ability of the display elements to react to changes. CRTs are heavy. They're expensive, Pictured here is a rare high-definition TV CRT. Our second technology is the liquid crystal display, the most commonly sold technology today. These displays modulate light, creating color, with a panel of liquid crystals. Liquid crystals are a state of matter between conventional liquid and solid crystal. For information about the organic compounds often used in liquid crystals, please consult with your neighborhood chemist. LCDs are compact, light, and cheap. Unfortunately, the layout of the liquid crystals is fixed, so LCDs only operate well at one resolution, the native resolution. Liquid crystals do not produce their own light, so LCDs require backlighting. The latest innovation in LCDs has been in backlighting. Instead of having a single rear backlight, the new thing is to have an array of LED backlights. This allows for much finer control of backlighting. Notice that, in this example, a single rear backlight produces a contrast ratio of 50,000 to 1, edge positioned backlights allow 1 million to 1, and the LEDs allow 2 million to 1. Digression contrast ratio. This is the difference between the brightest and dimmest light level the screen can display at one time, static contrast ratio, or ever, dynamic contrast ratio. Either way, the bigger the better, and static is more meaningful than dynamic. The manufacturers have different ways of measuring and reporting this ratio, so it should only be used when shopping among a single model line. Retailers are so excited about LED backlighting that they'll market their LED backlit LCDs as LED TVs. These retailers are liars. Here is an actual LED TV. It uses organic light emitting diodes to produce a picture. It is exceptionally compact. The display itself is only 3 millimeters thick. It is also rather expensive as 11 inch televisions go. Finally, we have plasma technology. These displays use cells containing electrically charged ionized gases. As it is with CRTs and real LED displays, there is no need for backlighting. Backlighting has been rendered unnecessary. We might even say that backlighting has been obviated. Plasmas have a fast response time, making for a sharper picture when things start moving. Plasmas have a wide viewing angle, almost on par with CRTs. Plasma technology is relatively expensive, so it is only economical on large displays. You won't see it very often on displays smaller than 37 inches. Conversely, at very large sizes, plasmas are cheaper than comparatively sized LED backlit LCDs, though they are still more expensive than conventional LCDs. Plasma technology doesn't work well at high altitudes because of the pressure differential. Check the manufacturer's maximum recommended altitude before you buy. Screen size. Everybody loves this. It's great to be able to tell your friends, yep, I've got a 72 inch display. Displays are typically sold by their diagonal, the measurement from a lower corner to the opposite upper corner. 
but we need to keep in mind that if we change the height-width ratio of the display, the relative length of the diagonal also changes. This is important if we want the same content to appear at the same height. Let's do a little geometry. On the right, we have the modern 16 by 9. On the left, we have the classic 4 by 3, though I scaled this triangle by a factor of 3, it's now 12 by 9, to make the math easier. Since we know how the sides of a right angle triangle are related, we can come up with a way to compare the diagonals. The diagonal of a 12 by 9 display is 15, so if it were 12 inches by 9 inches, the diagonal would be 15 inches. The diagonal of a 16 by 9 display is about 18.36 of our arbitrary units, or exactly the root of 337. The ratio of these diagonals computes to about 1.22. Therefore, when comparing a 16 by 9 display with a 4 by 3 display, multiply the diagonal of the 4 by 3 reference display by 1.22. For example, say you're shopping for a replacement for a 32 inch classically proportioned TV. Multiplying 32 times 1.22 will take you up over 39 inches, so you might as well get a 40. Screen burn in, the bane of virtually all displays. To avoid it, avoid long persisting pixels. And that's my talk. If you have questions, I will try my best to pass the buck, I mean answer them.